Shortly after this interview, we received the first mystery call. The caller always refused to identify herself. She told us she knew all about us, wanted to help us. But there was also a warning. Mockery was not something she'd recommend. Hello? I'm trying to contact Mr. Frank Spink. I wondered how you're getting on with your little project. I thought I might be able to help you, Mr. Spink, with a few things. I used to visit Cradle Hill and Clay Hill in the 60s, in the company of Mr. Arthur Shuttlewood. In the late 60s, I had a frightening experience. We saw what we thought was a comet in the sky, but it started to move and got bigger and bigger and bigger until it was hovering, and then it descended behind the trees. As some people got close to the tree line where the object had landed, it took off again. On its top was a flashing light, strobing but to no rhythm at all like a lamp which is shorting. No sound at all. It stood there, hovering, and then it took off into the stars faster than anything I'd ever seen in my life. I was terrified, and terrified of being left there on my own. I had a bad feeling about it. After this, we were hooked. Time to begin a serious quest to solve the mystery of the warmest of things. First stop, tourist information. Surely they can tell us something about the strange goings on. They won't talk. They gave me a map, but they won't talk. Tourist information was uncomfortable with UFO talk, something we found time and time again in Warminster. We headed for the hills. First stop, Clay Hill, home to witches as well as UFOs. It didn't scare us, but we decided to pay our first visit in daylight. <laughs> run! Run, Forrest, run! Mm. Wanna be in my film? I've been filmed by three people, I just can't take it. But we're on, are we not going to have any more people in here, guys, in this film? It's oh, not this, just me. This is, okay, tell me when you're ready. Are there going to be any women in it? That's what I want to do. Okay. okay. We're on the, um, on the summit of Clay Hill, which is about four miles outside Warminster. We're following in the steps of um, Arthur Shuttlewood, who saw some very strange things in the 60s, so he claims. And we're um, here to find out what he may have seen, or may not have seen, as the case may be. But um, over there's something he might have been interested in. If we were behind the station, then the military area, the firing range, and that's the village, you know the village? 1921 yeah. or 22, or Mr. T.W. Where they always used to do episodes of the professionals. The of the road yeah. the this is like Area 51, isn't it? Really? And look, they're all there. Battlesbury, yeah. Cradle, yeah. Cradle Hill, Copheath is there, yeah. Clay Hill's there, yeah. And where's Upton Skidamo? Upton Skidamo's there. So we should be able to see Upton Skidamo. Yeah, sure. He glanced to the hill on his right to see what traffic was coming down the main road. In that split second, the bus had disappeared. But he expected to meet up with it, thinking that perhaps it had stopped because of some trouble. trouble. But no. <laughs> he did not meet up with it. Even though no one has kind of heard of Arthur Shuttlewood and, we, and the, um, the tourist information people were really unfriendly, we come up the hill and there's loads of people pointing. Around. If you look around there, there's just tons of people walking about on the top of the hill. Yeah. And there are more coming up. Loads of people. Yeah. But there's obviously something. I think we've hit a nerve. Yeah, they are. Maybe, you know, since it's any day closing, the aliens can get here from work. <laughs> Maybe it's just people going for a walk. <laughs> We 
He's signaling. He's signaling. So, so you press button A. He's signaling, right? Signaling. Over there. Look, there's people signaling. He's signaling. There may be lay hunters. Yeah. Yeah. later in the 70s I was in Warminster looking in a shop window when I got a terrible shock in my neck and shoulders. Standing there looking at me was a man in black. He looked like the old Soviet president Khrushchev. He looked at me and just smiled a really horrible smile. I ran. You should stay away from them whatever they are. One person who wanted to stay away from them whatever they were was Sheila Hughes. In the mid-sixties, in the dark countryside outside Warminster, she'd witnessed a landing. And on the day we decided to visit, odd things began to happen. 1966, March the 13th. My husband and I went down to Southampton to visit my mother because it was our eldest son's first birthday. Excuse me. Hello? Hello? Just a beep. The sky lit up. We saw the light coming towards us and it seemed to get bigger and bigger through the trees until it was a, a huge glow in the sky. And that's, that's the light and there's the glow coming round. And we heard footsteps running, coming from in front of us, running towards us. And it was two men and Bob said, what was that? And they said, did you see it? It landed in that field. Hello? So, what it was, I can't tell you, but that was the experience of um, coming through Warminster, which was uh, quite scary. The skies, the, the trees opened up, the, the, um, the sky, we could see it was much brighter than that. And it was the whole horizon. On the way back, we saw a mysterious red flash that lit the countryside near Warminster. As this has a reputation of being flying saucer country, we speculated good-humouredly on our chances of meeting a few men from a neighbouring planet. No such luck. It landed in that field. It was eerie, I think. <laughs> 